Hey everyone, and welcome back to another Movie Mates video. I am Matthew, joined by my wonderful co-host and best friend, Callum. Hey man, good to see you, good to see you. So today, we've got our first mini-review in quite a while. It's our first movie mini-review since Sonic, isn't it? Yes, I believe so. Uh, the, the release schedule's been a bit, been a bit dry during 2020. It has, man, it has. But yeah, we're back with another mini-review, and uh, I'm just going to pass over to Callum to uh, say what movie we're going to be talking about and uh, what sort of things we're going to be talking about. So, oh, off to you, mate. Yes, so I would say this is the first uh, new release uh, since Scoob. Uh, the, as I said, the well's been very dry in 2020 due, due to coronavirus, and most studios still endeavouring to get their movie out into theatrical release. Absolutely. So th this film was completely intended for theatrical release, uh, but was instead pulled back and put onto Disney+. Plus. For our viewing pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man, can I just say, I think if this movie would have performed at the box office, it would have been a complete horror show. Uh, it, yeah, it would have been a, it would have been a train wreck. But yeah. Yeah, it's kind I of know I suggested we watch this, but jeez. <laughs> you know, I, I didn't have as bad a time as probably I think you did, but it's still it's not great. It's not great. But yeah. So the film that we're talking about today is Artemis File, yeah. uh, <laughs> directed by Kenneth Branagh. Uh. Yeah. yeah, so this is a, a... I'm trying to think of other Kenneth Branagh films. I know we did Murder on the Orient Express and Thor. Uh, what other? We did not do? talked about Murder on the Orient Express. What is it, sorry? Oh, I thought, I thought you said, like, we've covered it. Like, oh, no, 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 no. Got it. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it's directed by him. Yeah. Uh, he also directed Frankenstein in the 90s. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one, that's a good one. So, um, yeah, as Callum said, Artemis File. Are we going to do spoilers and non-spoilers, or just full spoilers, do you think? I was thinking just full spoilers, because it's yeah. readily readily available. If you want to watch this film, it's it's quite available. Yeah, that's a good point, man. So, yeah, full spoiler disclosure. Um, thank you to everyone who has recently supported us. Be sure to check out our latest podcast, Back to the Future, episode 37, if you haven't already done so. Uh, yeah. Be sure to email us at movementspodcast at gmail.com with any questions or podcast suggestions and uh, comment, comment your thoughts on Artemis File in the comment section down below. We, we, we would be very, exci we're very excited to hear your thoughts, guys, if you've seen it. So be sure to do that. Uh, so I'm yeah, sure any, anything you guys have to say is more interesting than the script of this <laughs> film. Man, I'm happy to hop in with your notes, to be honest, because I guess it's going to be quite okay. Shoot well, admit admittedly i'd heard this film was horrendous and that's exactly what i wanted we haven't watched like a genuinely hilariously awful film in a while we I we've basically just watched dull shit or some of the best films ever made uh very recently so i wanted to see some genuine hilarious garbage yeah and this couldn't even do that it like yeah, you know it no, like, disappointed me moments. in every regard there's no, like there are like occasional moments where you just like it's it's more it's more of like a sort of you know, hand in head kind of humor. It's not really like laugh out loud where you can laugh at it, like a Spider Man three or something like that. This is just, it's just so bland. Is that the right word for it? Just boring. Yeah, I mean, it's just yeah. Judy Dench is shit in this. Uh, every yeah, other yeah. actor is shit in this, it, aside from my, I, I guess Colin Farrell's passable. I guess so. I guess so. One thing like about the act, the acting in this film is, I, I thought the the kid who played Artemis Fowl Jr. was pretty good at the start, but then, he like, every scene he is in, like, from the halfway point, it's just him screaming. Uh, it's very generous to say he was ever good in it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's one of the worst child, child performances I've ever seen. <laughs> he kind of reminds me of, like, a young Asa Butterfield slash, like, Gaiden Matarazzo. Ugh, don't, don't, don't... No, not acting-wise. Just, just, yeah, not acting-wise, yeah, visually, sure. I'm tr I'm trying to you know I'm I'm comparing him in my mind to Edward Furlong and I'm like which is worse because uh, that that's the that's the ultimate criticism if you're worse than Edward Furlong you have failed at life I think uh, I think this kid I think it's uh, oh, I don't know I, I think he's, kid has more potential than Edward Furlong had yeah I think this kid has definitely got potential but like, I, I believe he can do better in the future yeah yeah that's a good weapon yeah I agree. Oh, this is gonna be a good one. This is gonna be good. You know what it is, man. I, I will praise the film on this. It's not very often you see like a big like Disney film that is like an Irish film. 
you know, and, and the Irish setting is becoming more popular, I suppose, with, with the release of Normal People, the TV show as well. So, you know, I think, and they also, they also got like a, a like Northern Irish slash Irish uh, director and, and Kenneth Branagh. I'm not sure where he's from. I think he, uh, on the island of Ireland. So. Belfast, I think, actually. Belfast, yeah, Belfast. And uh, yeah, it's good. To, it's good to see him like directing a project because he clearly, I think, it's clear he has a passion about this project. But um, I think it's probably one of his worst films that I've seen. But it, oh, it's by, by far the worst that I've seen but of his. He is a good director. I think. I think he's got a lot of potential. Like, but I, th- there's nothing interesting, creative, original, or unique about the about anything in this film. Like, it's it's all. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, the 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 book that it's based on was written in two thousand one. So you could blame the lack of originality on it's it's just too late for this to have been made. It's a good point. That's a good point. Like it, the film sort of kind of feels like a hodgepodge of different movies. Like it kind of reminds me of Hellboy Two, which is also set in like the island of Ireland as well. So it kind of reminds me of that. But then it kind of reminds me of like Men in Black as well, because it goes down sort of like you know criminal guys in suits and like hunting different species. It's just weird, man. It's just a very weird film, isn't it? Yeah, and it just none of it works together whatsoever. Yeah, man, I know totally. Like, there are some good things in here, and I think it has potential, but it's, I think it misses the mark, man. Yeah, I mean, when your film's called Artemis File, and the actor playing Artemis File is not a good actor, and the writing for the character of Artemis File is terrible, maybe question whether you should be making the film. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll I'll, I'll just give I'll, like I'll give one example. So. Uh, Artemis Fowl is like a child prodigy. He's meant to be, you know, an absolute genius for his age. Sure. And they they completely fail on sort of creating like the complex character that like say Sherlock Holmes is in Sherlock, uh, where you know he's he's meant to be like an annoying genius, but he's charming as well. But this kid lacks all charm, so he just seems like an absolute douche. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree. And. Um... I guess not necessarily a fault in the actor for me. It's more of like the characterization of Artemis Fowl Jr. It's just like he's 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 nothing. The thing that is, he's nothing really like uh, Colin Farrell really at all, which is disappointing because, as you say, Colin Farrell, Farrell probably gives the the performance of the film generally. So it, it is, and he's barely in it. That's <laughs> not amazing. difficult to do. That's, yeah, because that's he's barely in it as well. But yeah, the the kid playing Artemis Fowl, honestly, like. He just comes across with this like unbelievable arrogance with zero charm, and it it it, it was just painful to watch for me. Yeah, I agree. It sort of felt like they were gonna go for like the Tony Stark style approach, but Tony Stark actually has like charisma, sort of, doesn't he? Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't love the character in those films, but uh, yeah, I mean, at least you can't you can't fault Robert Downey Jr.'s acting. Yeah, man, that's a good point. It's a really good point. I would say one of the the lowest lows of this film is the CGI, as well. I, you know, I thought it was okay in some scenes, but in others, like it's clear, for me, it's clear that it was like a lot of it was spent in sort of like the big action scene at Fall Manor with like the troll and like the time shield. But like a lot of it, then just a lot, not a lot of it went to other parts of the film, so it was it lacked there. Yeah, like I looked it up. the The budget of this film was one hundred and twenty five million dollars. And yet, that I would say the most egregious example of terrible CGI in this film is the troll. I, okay. Like, I think that that's like, that's like you know, twenty sixteen, like you know, the World of Warcraft film, <laughs> and like that was bad for that time. As, yeah, man. Like, I don't know. There's, I think there is some good things in here, and um, like I said, like there is potential, but. I don't know, just it's not. It's just a very bland, nothing film, isn't it? Like it's very forgettable. I uh, we're we're gonna probably get into it like with our with our final thoughts when we wrap up. But yeah, it's it, it's a painful watch, honestly. Uh, I would say probably the worst part of the film is is like uh, when the fairies are descending upon Foul Manor, and and like I forgot his name. His name is literally the. The title of the film, I forgot it. Uh, oh, and like Artemis and his butler are are trying to like shoot them out of the sky. And there's like four million cuts, yeah. uh, like in in the in the one like two minutes scene. And just the the CGI is horrendous. <laughs> oh, it was, it was horrific. <laughs> one thing I kind of wanted to mention about the film, like I do agree with everything you just said there as well. Um, uh, the character, the the butler guy, I think it's um Tomo Tomovoy. 
is his name. Some I think so. Tom. It's Colin Tom. Uh, and I, he, I thought he was the best character in the film. Uh, but like like uh, like you said, that action scene was it was so it was so many cuts, unnecessary cuts. And um, another thing I wanted to mention was the the hooded figure who is the antagonist of the film. Uh, is, is pretty generous because like she gives Artemis she gives her, her Artemis for like three days to get the uh, Aculos, which is pretty generous, I think. You know, as villains go. Yeah, and I I sort of uh, realized you know near near the end. She had about five minutes screen time, you know. They they, they yeah. say they say the best the best films balance, uh, you know, heroes and villains and screen time about fifty fifty, sure. which you know the, the the best examples do that. Uh, I would say it was more you know hour twenty five minutes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you know what it is? Like I think the film misses the mark with the Artemis Fowl character. You know, he's supposed to be a genius, and he's just like, I can't find anything about the Aculos. Just Google it, mate. Just, it's probably in Google somewhere. Just Google it. It's probably not. I mean, I, I, I guess it depends, like... Yeah, I mean, we don't really know the, the rule, like, the context of this universe because they do nothing to set it up. Like, <laughs> is, 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 his, is his dad the only one who's aware of fairies and, like, fairy stories? Uh, or yeah, is that, like... I'm not sure. Or are they still popular legend? Yeah, it, it just depends because then, I guess... You know, the, the Aculos could also be a MacGuffin, like, in fairy mythology that people just think is bullshit, but is actually real history. What is, what is the Aculos? Uh, anyway, what is it? It's like an egg thing? See, see, Matthew, that's a really interesting question that I don't think I can tell you. Uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a gold device, and you hold it, and magic things happen when you recite a poem. Uh, I guess that's it. <laughs> There you go. There you go. <laughs> I would, yeah, it's it's one of the worst MacGuffins in in film history. I, I would I would say it's probably on par with like most of the Transformers films. Yeah, I suppose. I actually like the Transformers films for that though. I think this film does. Like, don't they? They're always finding like the spear of something or the cube of whoever the fuck you know. Yeah, like it's the old. You know, it, 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 I would say it's <laughs> yeah. the same. The, yeah, the same level of laziness as this. <laughs> the Matrix of Leadership. <laughs> Is that is that the name of one of them? Yeah, <laughs> that's that's embarrassing. I know you like those films. We'll get we'll talk about them one day. We'll talk about them one day. One hundred percent. Like very early on in the movie, mates, I I ruled that out and I said, Matthew, we're never talking about the Transformers films. But then I realized like we can't only talk about good films. We also have to talk about some of the worst. <laughs> the worst. To be fair, that franchise does look like it's getting better with Bumblebee and stuff. I I haven't actually seen Bumblebee, but it seemed like it was pretty well received. Yeah, it has John Cena in it. How, what, what can go wrong? Yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so in the in this character, we're in in this film, we're introduced to the character uh, of I don't remember his name because I don't care. Uh, he's played by Josh Gad. He's he's a dwarf, uh, allegedly. A giant dwarf. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> a giant dwarf. Yes. Uh, and I I was just wondering, like I I, I was just you know going to get a bit critical of the uh, criminal justice system because if he's actually biologically compelled to steal stuff how, how can you criminalize him to the same level as goblins who who don't have that biological <laughs> yeah. urge how, how yeah, can you yeah. judge it's, them by the same standards it's entirely unfair and what does he get he gets like 400 years or something for a sentence that that's brutal i don't know what he did yeah and i mean like it's not like that that's not a trivial amount because they sort of make it seem like oh a child is going to be like 80 years old you know, like the Holly Short's 80 years old, but she looks like a teenager. So yeah. 400 years is nothing. But then Judy Dench is, you know, she says she's going to be 803. So, I mean, it's still half of Judy Dench. You know, that that's yeah. still a solid, like, you know, f like 40 human years. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. So, seemed a bit harsh on, on our Josh Gad character. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, we, as I said, uh, the character of Holly Short, uh, she is kidnapped by. Artemis Fowl uh, and jailed within Fowl Manor, and yet they somehow develop a friendship, and it comes out of nowhere. And then it sort of they sort of move from one scene where she's locked up in it, locked up in a cage, and then the next scene they are quote forever friends. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just wondering, like, does she just face. have Stockholm syndrome? Like, I, like I, I don't understand. Yeah, like. 
she she I, I i for a second i thought they were like gonna build up to a romance i was just like oh that would have been disgusting yeah maybe it was stockholm syndrome but the film doesn't actually explain what explain why so and plus she she barely has yeah. any screen time anyway as well yeah i mean i just wrote is it because they both had dads it's like that seemed to be yeah. the only thing they had in common they yeah. were like you know literally like, everyone ever pretty much yeah like she you know he was just like oh my dad's been kidnapped she was like my dad's dead and they're like best buds <laughs> you know I, yeah. like, I, don't, I don't understand friends forever yeah love it i also don't think it's good for the movie when you kill off one of your main characters which was dom and i just did not care and I cared even less when he was brought back to life. Yeah, like I, I did like, I did like the, uh, is it Butler? Is his surname like Tom, Tom O'Boy? But I don't know. Uh, and I, I, I did like his character, but like, uh, I, I would have respected the film more if they just killed him off. Yeah, because I had like one. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I had like one glimpse of respect for. It. I was like, well, I didn't expect this from a kids' film, I guess. And then you know, thirty-five seconds later, he's alive again. I was like. Wow, yeah, you've brilliant. really brilliant. you've really outdone yourself with shittiness in this movie. Just uh-huh. it's embarrassing on most levels. Now the character of Judy the, the character of Judy Dench Judy, Gen- Judy Dench's character, um I sort of expected a lot more from Judy Dench. And um you know what it is? Like her character does get a lot of stick in the film. And I probably would tend to agree because like she sends in the whole army for one person. Yeah, and it ends up with like, you know, three, like two or three fairies being killed by being sucked into the time war. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's it, like she realizes that the files are a threat and uh, she doesn't want the, you know, the, the truth about fairies being exposed to the world. But yeah, it's probably not risk. It's not worth risking your entire army. Yeah. Yeah, no, man, I, I agree. And like, I suppose her character is like, it's just a very bland character and judy dench is a good actress but not i don't i think in this it's not a great performance that was a horrible performance is i mean she's also trying to do like a weird gruff irish accent like it's 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 one of the worst accents i've ever heard josh gad's accent's a bit strange as well because it's the film is told from his perspective pretty much and it's sort of like a a horse like uh like sort of like like gruffly voice i don't know how to describe it it's sort of like he's trying to act hard you know what i mean yeah but it's still american so i yeah i have no idea why he's doing it you know if if, if you want if you want to portray <laughs> that character like clearly they just hired josh gad for the star for the star power of his name but sure. i mean josh gad isn't even a, hu- a huge star you know if, you, if you're gonna sell this film off the back of anyone it'll be judy dench or colin farrell so i don't know why you're hiring josh gad just to have him do like a terrible a terrible voice when you could have just someone with a deeper voice like if, that, if that's the character you want to portray why are you hiring josh gad yeah yeah like he's a, he's a comedic actor i suppose the only film i've seen him in other than this is thanks for sharing which i love and he's, he's quite a comedic character in that so i think i think he's in that isn't he thanks for sharing uh is that is that is that the um mark ruffalo the mark, mark ruffalo gwyneth paltrow one yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, i don't i don't actually know i haven't seen it uh i know he's, a, he's in frozen but I, I have not seen that film but like yeah, he's quite. A, I would say he's quite like a comedic actor or like a, a more upbeat actor. And this, he, like, I think they miscast him. Like, he's good. He's oh, okay. He's okay in this, but they miscast him. I think. Well, I mean, he he also says that he's like you know a, like a giant dwarf, and he says, "Oh, I'm probably like three or four feet too big." But I mean, he's only like five foot eight. You know, he's yeah. not. He's not. You know, like they should have cast like Shaquille O'Neal or something. <laughs> yeah. That would be. I would have been good. He probably would have been good in this as well. Yeah, pro- probably a better acting job. Let's be honest. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So one of the final scenes of the film, because there is a solid like forty minutes where just nothing happens. So I have skipped quite far ahead. I respect. Uh, that. But I would say one of the, one of the final lines of the film is, "I'm Artemis File, criminal mastermind." <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, first of all, like, you're not a mastermind. You're like just like so far up your your own arse like you you're like he he's you know he he can like date by sight you know an old victorian era chair good for you like i don't i you know <laughs> knowledge isn't knowledge isn't intelligence you know mem- memory doesn't doesn't mean you're smart you know like I, th- I think he's wildly misjudged you know his his genius 
Uh, he, he doesn't really seem to be smart. Uh, I mean, he's a, de- <laughs> he's a decent strategist, but he's not a criminal mastermind. Yeah, I thought I, I didn't really get that whole like family criminal because in the film synopsis, it's like criminal mastermind Artemis Fowl and his son or whatever. I didn't really get that whole criminal mastermind. They seem like pretty decent guys, you know. Yeah, they're they're meant to be a lot more like morally ambiguous in the in the books. Like they are outright thieves and they are criminals. But yeah, in, the, in this film, you know, er, like he, he everything he does that's morally questionable is all uh, for the end you know, of saving his dad. So I I, I think everything that he does in this film is morally permissible. So he doesn't do anything criminal, really. Yeah, that's the thing. And like like we said, I think the kid does have potential. Like, it wouldn't surprise me if we see him in more projects coming forward, because I think he is decent in some scenes. But um, I don't know. Like, I think the film just misses the mark for me, man. And I I don't have any more to say about it. Do you have anything? Just, I would say this is one of the first films I, I would I would say a lot alongside the the recent Netflix uh, release, which was called I I think it was called Love Marriage Repeat or something. Yeah, is that the Love one Wedding Repeat or some shit? Yeah, uh, it starred Sam Claflin and Olivia Munn. Yeah, it's one of the worst films I've ever seen in my life. I started it. I think yeah. I think it was Love Wedding Repeat. It was what it it is garbage. Like it, I would say this and that are some of the only movies I've ever questioned, like, what am I doing with my life? I was like... <laughs> Not bad. I was just sat there at, like, 8 a.m. watching this shit, and I was like, I was like, why have I done this to myself? Because I'm uh, actively choosing to, my, to punish myself. Like, why, why should we watch a film that we don't enjoy watching? I was just like, what am I doing? Man, I was the same. I was, like, at, like, midnight last night, watching this and I, I i just i got like 40 minutes in and was like i have to go to bed for my own health here because i'm exhausted so i had to, and then i put it yeah. on this morning i was it was a tough watch man it was a it's a, it's a slow burn it, like it was a genuine punishment and i as i said like it's not even laughably laughably bad because at least that would be enjoyable like it's just dull nonsense <laughs> it's a great way of putting it man that's a really good way of putting it like I, I know on the on the on the movie mates uh you know mini reviews we don't actually usually rate them out of 10 uh but i'm just going to give a very a very brief comment that uh oh, if i were to rate it on quality i guess i would give it four out of ten and enjoyment a zero that's a good one i, I give it a five and a, a one so we're similar in that regard see i don't think it's ever gone that way like i think it's usually that we say it it's like not great quality but we had a great time with it or yeah. You know, it's a good film, and we had the same level of enjoyment. I don't think we've ever like agreed that it's a competently made film, like a solid four or five out of ten, and then just said, "But it was one of the worst like film experiences that we've ever had." Yeah, I think the uh, fact that it's well shot and stuff boosts the quality. Like, it's it's generally well shot. There's a lot of like, you know, quick cuts and stuff which are unnecessary, but generally speaking, it's it's well it's well um well shot. I think. Yeah, I think I think you have to recognize some competence in it. You have to say, yeah, it's it's you know, it's a movie. Like it is shot. You know, it's not. You don't recognize it as, you know, outright bad. It's not. It's not sure. notably badly filmed. The the music is entirely unnotable. Yeah. Some of the performances are not terrible. So I guess you know, on a level of competence, I think a four out of ten is fair. But I, I think agree. the real question that we're all wondering is, Matthew, was it a massive hit or a piece of shit? I think this is going to be my first piece of shit. It's not the first, Matthew. You you also called uh, Men in Black International. Oh, yeah! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I preferred this to Men in Black International. What? Yeah, I hate that movie. No. I hate that movie. I can't, I can't believe that. <laughs> no, mass, uh, piece of shit. <laughs> I nearly called it a massive hit. Piece of shit. What would you give it? I'm, I'm sensing a, a, a massive hit. Uh, hmm. Uh, I, I think you're wrong there. Uh, yes, I'm going to go with a very definitive piece of shit. Listen, man, uh, should, do you want me to wrap up the episode then? Sure, go ahead. I thought that you had some great points. And I, I agree with everything you've said, mate. And um, yeah, uh, thank you for everyone who has tuned into this mini review. We really do appreciate it. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and uh, email us at moviematespodcast.gmail.com. Thank you, Callum. Been a been a pleasure. And um, yeah, you, we'll, see, we'll see you guys soon with our Pixar part six. So uh, catch you later, guys, and bye bye. Bye bye.